got a whole lot of movement in those. What is up Team Colossus? We're back at you again with the How To Series. We're gonna be doing a common exercise, the leg press. I'm sure a lot of you think you know how to do it, but I promise you, you will learn something new from this video. There'll be some great takeaways, so be sure to smash that like button. Let's dive into it. The leg press is an amazing mass building exercise because you can load a ton of weight in a safe position where you don't have to worry about being crushed or necessarily failing. It's got amazing fail safes, as most of them have a lever you can open and close with. However, a lot of people do it wrong. They'll really overload themselves. They'll push themselves past an actual working motion where they're getting full range of motion reps. <laughs> You'll find that a lot of people are quarter repping or half repping at most. And we guys, we want to show you how to do this leg press exercise properly. I'd say I use a lot less weight than most people do, but I find I get phenomenal results for my legs. Mistake number one is range of motion. This might seem obvious, but we're going to show you some cool ways where you can actually get a better range of motion. So one issue I commonly find are people hunching forward boxing yourself with their elbows towards their knees, and that's really inhibiting how low your legs can go. Within that, if you're leaning forward, you're once again kind of taking away from that, you're curving your spine, you're taking them out of this strong loaded position. So what I like to do is, you can see me doing here, I'll load my spine, I'll actually put my hands behind my head, and I find this opens up my chest and leads me back to focus on using the driving force from my legs. So now you can see I can lower it to the correct range of motion for me which is a full contraction of the hamstring. You'll really feel it pushed in and balled up, not to where my lower back is lifting off the bench, but to where it's completely compressed. Past that, you're gonna extend forward. And as you guys can see here, I'm gonna show you the differences between locking the knees and not locking the knees. If you're using a lot of weight, you wanna make sure you are not locking your knees. Full range of motion does not entail locking your knees. However, it does entail a good lockout with a good contraction. You see at the top here on the correct side, but I'm contracting my quadriceps in an effective way and really squeezing and once again focusing on my muscle connection. On the other side, I'm doing it like an idiot. I'm going too fast. I'm straining my knees and I'm going to be in a lot of pain down the road. Snap city. So common mistake number two in the leg press is that far too many people are actually driving through their toes rather than their heels. And the main issue here is that over time they're going to cause a lot of stress on their knee joints. On top of that, it's an extremely weak pressing position. A good way to combat this is by really focusing on driving strictly through the heels on the leg press. That's a great turnover to the squat to make sure that you really keep those heels nice and flat. You're in a strong pressing position and if you really want to target your quads best, which is what this main exercise is for, you want to focus on literally just driving through the heels, keep your toes nice and flat and you guys will develop huge quads and be able to press um, a large amount of weight. Mistake number three is improper foot positioning. There's several ways to have improper foot positioning. The first and the most common mistake I see is people that keep their feet straight. Some would argue that this is okay, but in my opinion, the safer bet is to have some ducking of the feet. It'll look like this, as you can see on the screen now. That ducking will open your hips ever so slightly, keep your knees angled outward, and prevent that knee buckling pain that can arise from straight legs. This is also more practical to replicate a squat, whether you are high bar or low bar, and that's something that you want to have a consistency of through and through. Same with that driving motion that Kyle just mentioned, driving through the heels. It's a lot easier to do when your feet are in a more natural position. If you jump, you'll notice that you don't jump with your feet completely straight. You'll have some bend. It's a natural way, that little arching of the feet. Past that, some people put their feet way too high up, and it'll cause your butt to lift up, your spine to curl out, and that's something you want to avoid. They'll have it way too low, and this once again creates a pressing motion to be very awkward and non-natural. By positioning it in about a normal, you, you have to play with it to see what's right for you. For me, I'm a little bit higher than mid. I find that this is where I get the safest and most full range of motion, whereas some people will be a bit lower or higher. You have to play around with it and see what feels the most natural. Okay guys, so when executing a proper leg press, number one thing I like to do is I like to take this little thing, push it all the way back. We've already got it set up, but the reason I do this is because it allows me to open up more. 
them a full range of motion, but if you're a smaller person, I'd recommend kind of lifting it up a tiny bit more. And uh, next thing we're gonna do is actually we're gonna focus on this little thing right here. Far too many people have it set up right to this top notch. This is gonna restrict your range of motion. This thing's gonna hit down here every single time, so we have it at the very bottom. And then you're gonna get into your little leg press, do the setup that we've already taught you guys. And then there's always gonna be a little lever on the side. Some of them you have to make sure to let go and push out. This one does it automatically. You set up, protect, contract your scapula, get your rhomboids nice and tight, and then lift, and then the gains begin. So this is how you do it. Oh yeah. So I like to put my hands up. Squeeze them juicy quads, boy. Oh yeah. <laughs> Variation number one, we're kicking it off with the narrow stance leg press. Now there's actually a common belief that keeping the feet together works the outer sweep, also known as the vastus lateralis. Unfortunately, to my knowledge, there is no scientific proof backing it up, but I assure you, you'll get a crazy quad pump. Um, and this exercise is just fantastic to substitute in if you would like to try it out. I'd love to hear what you think. Moving on to some slow negatives here, you're gonna be working on the time under tension and really focusing on getting a three second descent while doing this exercise. You wanna make sure you're driving harder to the bottom. Don't worry about the concentric tempo, just drive the weight up with force. And you wanna make sure you're not locking out and stopping just short of lockout, just like any other leg press you're gonna be doing. Moving on to the single leg press. So chances are you may have an imbalance between your left and right sides, where one side is bigger or stronger than the other. And this is actually very common with a lot of lifters. But by doing single limb exercises, such as the single leg press, you're gonna be forcing each side to perform an equal workload and this is gonna help you develop balance and proportion between the left and right legs. We highly recommend you adding these into your routine and trying them out. Okay guys, we hope you learned something on the leg press today. If you enjoyed it, make sure to smash that like button, share it with a friend who does it improperly or wants to learn. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and we'll see you in the next video. Peace out.